Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is on perpendicular lines. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. So then make sure you click the integrated math one link. So here's the integrated math one link right here. So when you go to mrmathblog.com, it's going to take you to a site that looks like that. Okay, and then across the top, you'll see all the classes that I teach. And then over here on the right, you guys, um, you're going to see, I haven't started it yet, but I'm going to put in integrated math two and math three over here. So Anyway, so here's our Integrated Math 1 link right there. So when you scroll down, this is going to be Module 19.4. So it's going to go right down below here when I just get done uploading this. So here we go. So um, uh, don't forget, uh, uh, I'm, you sure, you've probably seen this symbol before, an upside down capital T is our word for perpendicular. So we don't have to write that anymore. So that long word. So. So our question here is, what are the key ideas about the perpendicular bisectors of a segment? Okay, so we're going to have segments. We're going to bisect them, which means they go through the middle, the midpoint. And let's do that with this one. So we're going to construct the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. So here's our first step. So we're going to place the point of our compass. So I have our compass over here uh, on point A. So this is how you do the perpendicular bisector of a segment. So you put the point over there on A. Okay, and then uh, using the compass setting, that's greater than half the length of AB. So as long as this opening is farther than half the length, so I'm guessing the half, half is right about there. So as long as it's open further, then it says draw an arc on top and on bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this arc right here on the top and on bottom. So you can just draw one big arc right there. Okay, all right. And then uh, the second step says... Um, uh, without adjusting the compass, we're going to place the point on B, okay? So don't change the compass opening, and we're going to place this point over here on B, and we're going to do the same thing from this point right here. We're going to arc it on top and on bottom. Just make sure that the compass, uh, uh, the arcs intersect, okay? So, so that's why it has to be over half the length. If it wasn't over half the length, they wouldn't reach each other and intersect right there. All right, so now we're going to label those points C and D, okay? So now we're going to use our straight edge and draw the segment CD, okay? So there's the segment CD. Notice I put this as M right here. What do you think M stands for? It stands for the midpoint, and so the midpoint means we bisect the segment. Not only did we bisect the segment, let me move the compass out of the way, um, uh, it's a right angle, so it's a perpendicular bisector of this segment right there, okay? So this this blue mark and this blue mark just means that uh, MB is congruent to MA, or AM is congruent to uh, MB, okay? And there's a right angle right there, so right angles means perpendicular, and this means bisected, so it's the perpendicular bisector. All right, okay, let's do another one. We're going to construct a line. Uh, that passes through some point P that is not on this line L right here that is parallel. So we're going to draw a perpendicular line right through here using our compass again. Okay, so let's just slide this over. We're going to have to uh, use this again. So I'm going to rotate that up like that. All right, and then let's go ahead. Here's step one. Step one says to, uh, let's see, that that kind of got me in the way there. Step one says to place the point of the compass at P and draw an arc uh, so it intersects the line at two points. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and place the point right up there, uh, right there, and then we're going to draw an arc so it intersects the line. So uh, I'll start right about there. Okay, so it intersects the line in two points. So there's one point right there. And then there's two points right there, okay? And it says to label them points A and B. So let me move that out of the way, okay? All right, so there they are, A and B. And then it says here, uh, from points A and B, make the same size arc uh, below the line. Okay, so from points A. So I'm going to take this compass and put it over here on point B. You can put it on A first if you want. And then draw an arc below down here. And then don't adjust the compass. Okay, we've got to slide this over here now and then do the same thing with the same compass opening okay and then right there and it says to label this point c right there okay so let's go ahead and label that point c 
Okay, and then uh, now we just have to use a straight edge to draw PC. Okay, well that's easy enough. And so what we did is we created a perpendicular line to L right there. Okay, all right. Now this is a line right here, so that's not necessarily a midpoint right there. If it was a segment, it's a midpoint, but there is no midpoint if you're dealing with a line because lines are infinite, you guys. They go on for infinity, so there is no halfway point to infinity. Okay, but if it was a segment, it would be the that would be the midpoint right there. But that's how you do a perpendicular point, uh, perpendicular line from a point that's not on a line. We draw this arc first, and then from these two points, we draw these guys down here. Okay, and then construct them to the other one there. So here's perpendicular bisector theorem. So if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. And you're thinking, what? Well, this is what this means right here, you guys. If if this is the perpendicular bisector, can you see this uh, line going through? It's a right angle, so it's perpendicular. And these two tick marks tells me it's bisecting. So what this says, if we have this perpendicular bisector right here, then any point on this uh, perpendicular bisector is going to be the same distance from A to B. So let's just say if we picked a point P. Okay, well that point P is the same distance to A as it is to B. That's all this says right there, okay? Any point, if we picked point R, that's the same distance to A and B. If we picked, you know, any point to point S, it's the same distance from A to B. Okay, that's all that says right there. And the converse of that also is true. So the converse of the perpendicular bisector uh, theorem is also trees, true. So it says if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector. So if it's equidistant, that's what this says. If this point is equidistant to the two endpoints of a segment right here, then it lies on that perpendicular bisector right there. Okay, all right, so um, here's another theorem. So if two intersecting lines form a linear pair that are equal to each other, then those angles have to be uh, right angles, so that means they're gonna be perpendicular. So if these two intersecting lines, L and, L and M, uh, form these two equal linear pair angles, remember linear pairs add up to 180, so if they're equal, they each gotta be 90 and 90 right there. So if they're 90s, they're perpendicular, that's what this says. So if you have equal linear pairs, then you got perpendicular lines, okay? So the proof is on the bottom of your page uh, 968, and they kinda walk you through it, no problem. So the converse of this is also true, and it states that if two intersecting lines are perpendicular, perpendicular, then they form uh, equal linear pair angles, okay? All right, so then you're going to see some uh, fancy stuff with all parallel lines and perpendicular lines and all that stuff. So here we have a figure right here with all kinds of groovy stuff in here. So let's uh, fill in, uh, let's put arrows on our parallel lines and let's put these uh, angle measures in their appropriate spot. So one is going to be 50 right there and five is going to be 90. So we'll put a 90 there and we'll put arrows on our parallel lines. So I put one arrow on this one and this one to show that these lines are my parallels and two arrows on this one and this one to show that they're parallel. Now remember, parallel lines form equal corresponding angles. That's what we're going to use in this one. Um, uh, I don't see any alternate interior angles that I would use on this, I don't think. All right, so let's just start filling stuff in, you guys, and I just kind of talk my way. There's all kinds of correct ways to do this in different orders, you guys. I first did vertical angles, okay? If that's 50, that's 50, and if that's 90, that's 90, right? Right there. Vertical angles are equal, so angle 7 is 90 right there. And then I did, I think I did corresponding angles. Yeah, corresponding angles. So I slid this 50 right down here. I slid this 90 right here, and I slid this 90 right here. So that gave us these two guys. So so angle three was 50 and, and oh and oh yeah, and I slid this guy down right here. Now once you knew that's 50, vertical angles, okay? Vertical angles, so that happens all the time. Or you can say corresponding angles is 50 and this 50 right here. All right, and then uh, to get my other angle, say this angle eight and angle six, and remember whatever angle six is, angle four is the same because it's a vertical angle. I use this fact, you guys, straight lines are always 180. So these three angles right here, this 
50 plus whatever angle 8 is right there plus 90 has to be 180. So, so you just do a little arithmetic there and you get angle 8 is equal to 40. Similarly, angle 6 is equal to 40, which means angle 4 is equal to 40 because they're vertical angles. Okay, all right, you guys, I hope that made sense. And if you're in my class, that would be your assignment.